on the agenda for today for release preparations. Now the first thing you guys should do with respect to these preparations is actually getting your own graphical resources because you obviously don't want all the light quint stuff in there. Now, I'm not going to be uh, actually making them on screen because I'm really just not qualified and it would also take a while. But I will show you uh, where everything you need to find and replace is. So let's start. First, you're going to go to uh, Share and Pix Maps. And yeah, as you can see, I'm also not qualified to uh, show you how to do this. This is the extent of my graphical powers. But anyway, uh, in this folder, you see the different sizes of icons in uh, both uh, PG, uh, PNG and XPM format. Make sure you get both of those. You also have some of the other icons that appear in the uh, in the coin. Also, these right here, these are the uh, actually images that would appear in the Windows install wizard. I could actually never get these to work, but they're good to uh, do anyway. And then going back to the main directory, you're going to go to SRC, QT, Res. First, we'll go to icons. And here's some more icons that appear in the client. Here you have uh, the dot icos. If you're not aware, a dot ico is kind of a it's a special file that contains a bunch of images of different resolutions. That you know they're the same I image, but they're in different resolutions for an icon. Um, I'll give you uh, links to make uh, links that would f to tools that make all that make making all these. Wow, sorry about that. Make making all these uh, really easy in the description. You know for a, a dot ico maker. PNG to XPN, all that good stuff, or XPM, and all that good stuff. Um, and you've also got a uh, .ICNS here. Uh, .ICNS is kind of like a .ico, but for Mac, and since I'm not going to be doing Mac in this tutorial, you don't really have to worry about it. Of course, I did one anyway, as you can see. And then we move on to uh, res uh, images. And here's where you see these splash images that appear when you actually start your coin. And also this appears in the about screen. But uh, you'll notice that there are counterparts for both the mainnet and testnet. I didn't make any different ones. Well, the only exception is I had to make a different one for the splash. But um, otherwise, mine, mine are the same. It's, you know, I, I decided it wouldn't be worth the effort. <laughs> I'm that lazy. But, you know, of course, you can do whatever you like. And also change out any other icons you want. But the key to there's really no set way of doing this. All you need to do is just make sure that uh, this, this, these sizes and formats are the same. So, for example, let's see uh, here. Go back to uh, share real quick. Pix maps. Yeah. So, for example, for, uh, for Bitcoin 64.png, if it's not 64 by 64 and not a dot .png, it's not going to work. Make sure you do that, and just go th go through the, all these folders, the the three folders that I mentioned. That's that's where all the graphical resources are going to be, and just swap out everything you want, and you'll be good. Okay, and moving on. Actually, before I do move on, I'm going to show you what the client looks like after making all those changes, if the uh, thing wants to cooperate. Okay. There's my amazing splash image. You can see here the icon to the left and the toolbar image. Really not that exciting, but hey, it works, so that's good. So no, uh, no, no light coin stuff in here. I'm close that because I don't need it anymore. And then moving on, the next thing we're going to do is correct the copyright notices. So uh, I'm sure you noticed that when, when we start the thing, I'll do it again just to show you. Some little copyright things appear here, and obviously the second one is just a terrible lie. So if we're making a release, we should really change that. And there are actually four things we're gonna, or four files we're gonna edit to change that. Uh, first, I'm gonna open up my trusty cheat sheet because I will need that. And just as always, I will put everything I'm using in the cheat sheet in the uh, in a paste bin, which will be linked in the description. So moving on, first thing we're going to do is we'll get back to our uh, coins directory first. Okay, and we're going to go to first about dialog.cpp, which is an SRC. Qt, and here it is about dialog.cpp. Open that up, go back to full screen. And uh, line 11, we're going to fix. I'm sure if it's line 11. No, wait, it was line 22, sorry. Line 22. Here is line 22. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste something from my cheat sheet in here. So here we are. 
copy. This is line 22, just making sure. And paste. And now you notice we added this at the end. Now, you are obviously going to go and put whatever you want want to show up in the copyright notice here. For me, it's, I'm just doing fun coin developer. And this is the year that you're specifying. Uh, I'm doing this at the tail end of 2017. So there's that. And that's it for this file. Save. And moving on. Next, we're going to splash screen.cpp, which is also in this file. Here it is. And this one's the, probably the more most involved one. So first, we're going to go here. And uh, at line 22, we're going to add the following. Int line 4 equals 39. Oh, wow. I really can't type today. Ugh. Anyway, the next thing is fixing line 30 and adding line 31. So this happened when we did the find and replace way back when. And we're going to make turn that back to the light coin. And then right below, we're going to add another line, which is also in my glorious cheat sheet. So line 31, this is going to be this guy. Same thing as before, just adding my own notice in here. I think I just indented twice, but whatever. And there we go, simple as that. Same thing with the year. And uh, next up in this file is fixing line 48. And we fix that simply by doing this. So instead of ending at line 3, it's going to be ending at line 4. Done. And we're going to add line 54. So again, glorious cheat sheet. This one's fortunately going to be the same for you. So you can just copy and paste this one directly. And where did I put line 54? And that is over here. Copy. Paste. And done. Save. Okay, uh, there are two more files we need to do. The next one is in SRC, QT, scroll up, res, and it's this one, this one right here, bitcoinqt.rc. Okay, and we're going to line 11. So that's what line 11 is. And uh, again, for, I'm just going to copy and paste the correct line. So line 11 is going to be this guy. And just like everything else, we're preserving the Litecoin developers while adding our own. So we take line 11, paste, there we go. Easy as pie. This is, uh, you know, the, ye the correct year and what you're putting in right after this string over here. Save. And there is one more, and that is in SRC QT forms. And it's dot dialog.ui. This one doesn't open with gedit by default, so we have to go to open with gedit. Okay. And we are going to line 94. Okay, 94, which is this guy right here. And so same thing, copying, replacing. I'm going to go back to my cheat sheet. And below line 94, we're actually going to overwrite one of the lines. We're overwriting line 95 with these two guys. So we do this. And then we paste. So we fixed the Litecoin bit and added our own. I mean, we did the same thing in all four files. I think, once again, remember to add your own stuff instead of Funcoin, because your coin is not going to be as fun as mine. Save. All right, and that's it as far as the copyrights are concerned. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add a hard-coded seed node if we have one. So if you will recall, back in video two, we deleted a gigantic array of, I think it, it's actually 600 hard-coded seed nodes. And that's one of the ways the client has of finding uh, peers when it first comes online. So we want, we want to do that so that uh, when someone new plays with your coin, they're not going to have to add anything in a configuration file or through the command line to connect to the network. It will do it automatically. Of course, you're going to need a... Uh, a node first. So say you have a node set up and you have a uh, an IP address to the node. And by the way, a node is just the client, but it's operating in a server mode and it's accepting connections. In my previous video, the clone was the node, just so that you, you have an idea of what they are. So I'm going to go back to my glorious cheat sheet and I will get 
the Perl script that I need in order to get this this IP address in the correct format and if you need a reminding this will be in the paste bin so copy the entire script and now I need to put it into a file so I'm just gonna go to my desktop new document ip.perl now open it and paste in the script and save it and I'm gonna make sure I'm in my desktop and then do perl ip.perl now you enter a dotted quad IP address this is the format that you almost always see IPv4 addresses in also note that uh, unfortunately this version of Litecoin does not support IP IPv6 so if you don't have any sort of IPv4 address for your node you are out of luck I'll just be entering 127.0.0.1 you know if you don't know that's uh, synonymous with localhost this one actually work but just to show you what you enter press enter and it'll spit out the correct for uh, the IP address in the correct format so I'll copy this bit and I will go to um, funcoin src net.cpp and go to the line, I believe it is 1228. Indeed it is. And so here's the seed node with the 0x0 that we put in there earlier. And I'm just going to replace the 0 with the IP address. And now if you have multiple nodes, you just separate them by a comma. That's super tricky. But I only have one, so yeah, if you only have one, there's no comma, just leave it like that and save it. Oh, and also as a small heads up, this is the last thing that a client would usually try for connecting to the network. So when you first start up a new client, when you first start up a new client, it'll actually take a couple of minutes to use this information. Don't worry about it, that's completely normal. All right, and then next up is changing our Gideon descriptors. So I mentioned in the last video that you're going to need a GitHub account for cross compilation. So I'm actually not gonna make one and upload the repository on the screen because there's just a lot of ways of going about doing it. I'm assuming if you've made it this far, you are indeed capable of using Google and can figure out how to set up a GitHub repository yourself. You're just going to turn your coins main directory into the repository. I'll, I'll link to fun coins in the description just so that you know what it's supposed to look like. And once you've done that, we're going to go to um, fun coin contrib Gideon descriptors, and we're going to start with Gideon.yml. There's only one thing we're changing in here, it's, and that's the URL right here. So again, this is incorrect. It was affected when we did the search and replace. So this first bit here is just your GitHub account name. That's mine. And then the second part is the repository name with git at the end, and this is going to be our repository name. So this is already okay, funquin.git. And I will save that. And now I'm going to uh, get in 132.yml, same exact thing. Fixed. Okay, and now as always, you should always, always, always do a test compilation before uh, you continue with anything else. All right. And now, if you complete your test compilation, you start up your client, everything is working the way you want it to, you know, all the graphical resources are doing okay, everything else is good, make sure, you know, double check, make sure everything else is good, you are good to proceed onto video 6, where, as I, as I hinted at earlier, it is by quite a long shot the, uh, the hardest part of this whole thing, Windows cross compilation, when we finally make our release that you can share it with everyone, so, uh, yeah. Fun times will be ahead, and real quick, I will show you what the new splash is going to look like. Yep, and there it is. Yay! I will see you in video six.